the skeptic suffer from hypertension? Because he took everything with a grain of salt. <laughs> and what did the doctor say to the guy who committed a crime on dialysis? He told him, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Ryan here and I greet you once more in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to our 44th Mnemonic in Internal Medicine. This time we're talking about issues that we see in chronic kidney disease, all right? But a quick scripture first, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Here Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and him with me. You see everybody, the reason God created man was to have fellowship with man. And the promise in his word is, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. He says, seek me and you shall find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I pray that will be our desire, to get to know God on a more personal, more intimate level. All right. So today's topic is issues in chronic kidney disease. So we know that the differential for chronic kidney disease in terms of etiologies, most commonly it's diabetes, right? And this usually first, there's a spectrum of how diabetes uh, presents in the kidney. We'll talk about this another time, but it ranges from asymptomatic proteinuria all the way to overt CKD, nephrotic syndrome, etc. Other common causes include hypertension-induced nephropathy, glomerulonephritis, polycystic kidney disease, multiple myeloma, nephrotoxins like non Don't forget renovascular disease as well in the way of arthritis or glomerular sclerosis with age, uh, etc. Okay, and how do we define CKD? Chronic kidney disease is defined by more than three months of abnormal renal function, which suggests an irreversible component. And how do we classify it based on the Kidigo classification? And there's five stages, and the third stage divided into 3A and 3B, and this is based off the EGFR. Okay, so we're not going to get into detail with that. Um, uh, risk factors for CKD uh, and progression is older age, hypertension, proteinuria, a high-protein diet, and dyslipidemia. Okay, so, so by now, these are basically signs and symptoms of chronic kidney disease, okay? So you know you get volume overload because the kidney has a problem excreting free water, and there's also issues with uh, metabolism of salts. Okay, we get acid-base disorders like we discussed yesterday in our video. Um, and um, CKD can manifest with either a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis or a wide anion gap metabolic acidosis, all right? Neurological sequelae to watch out for in CKD are numerous, including seizures, decreased memory and concentration, altered smell and taste, peripheral neuropathy, sleep disturbance, restless leg syndrome. Anemia is on the basis of a decreased erythropoietin production from the juxtaglomerular cells in CKD. And remember that EPO is what uh, stimulates the bone marrow to churn out more red blood cells. So if you don't have EPO, you can end up with normal cystic anemia. However, a lot of these patients are also iron deficient because as we will see, uremic gastritis can cause iron deficiency. Uh, so we got to replete the iron first before we supplement with EPO. And we'll talk about that under treatment issues, all right? So uremia, as we know, can also manifest with the pericardial friction rub. So watch your PFR, which indicates uremic pericarditis, platelet dysfunction, uremic gastritis, gastrointestinal issues to watch out for. Mm basically in the way of nausea and vomiting and gastritis and the anorexia. Hematological issues has to do once again with the normal cystic anemia and the uremic platelet dysfunction. Okay, muscular skeletal is intimately tied with calcium metabolism. So what happens is that in CKD, you have diminished uh, hydroxylation of vitamin D3, which is 1,25 dihydroxycorticosiferol. And that um, the net result of that is hyperphosphatemia with hypocalcemia. And you have secondary hyperparathroidism. Uh, and that PTH leaches the bone, giving rise to renal osteodystrophy. So what you end up with is osteitis fibrosa cystica with increased bony resorption as a result, and osteomalacia with decreased bony resorption and unmineralized bone due to aluminum binder use, which is now uncommon. You can also end up with adynamic bone disease with decreased bony resorption due to oversuppression of PTH. Don't forget electrolyte imbalances. The main one, the critical one to know is hyperkalemia. Right. We also have dermatological manifestations in the way of uremic frost, a sallow complexion and pruritus, and also don't forget sexual disturbance as well in the way of amenorrhea, sexual dysfunction, infertility. Whew, that was a mouthful. So for now, meds is the overall um, mnemonic. Okay, and remember on investigations, guys, to do your labs, to you do your uh, full blood count for the differential, your urea and electrolytes, your glucose, your HbA1c, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, sometimes do a PTH, but usually the situation in CKD is secondary hyperparathyroidism, fasting dipper profile, urinalysis, 24-hour urine albumin collection or protein collection if you're thinking of nephrotic range proteinuria, which would indicate nephrotic syndrome, right? So you can do a 24-hour urine protein collection. Special test you might want to do is a myeloma workup if there's a suggestion of crab have features, which we will talk about in our heme section, but 
but essentially you want to do a SPEP, which is a serum protein electrophoresis and urine pre protein electrophoresis. How do we distinguish between a chronic and acute renal failure? Well, if you've got a previous urine electrolytes, at least um, three months or more uh, before this index presentation, which shows an elevated creatinine, that can reliably say that this patient has chronic kidney disease. Anemia is another one. Small kidneys on renal ultrasound is another one. Uh, there are some exceptions, however, which we'll talk about, like diabetes and amyloid and HIV nephropathy, high van. And also, if the patient has renal osteodystrophy, this is indeed consistent with chronic kidney disease. Renal biopsy is also helpful, guys. So a quick note on how do we slow progression in CKD. First up, limit your protein intake. The advice is 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day. ACE inhibition very important to control your blood pressure and also to control your proteinuria. It's renal protective. Lipid control is absolutely important. Avoid nephrotoxins. Stop smoking, please and treat the diabetes and hypertension and treat within your target goals. All right, in terms of complications for your volume overload, you want to use low-sodium diet and use diuretics. For your hyperkalemia, blah, 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 it comes under electrolyte problems, right? If your potassium is about 5.5, you can use a low-potassium diet. You can use hydrochlorothiazide, kx 30 grams uh, daily to QID, okay, and decreased ACE inhibitor use, all right? And obviously, if it's very severe and refractory, you might want to go through to dialysis. Metabolic acidosis, we can use uh, sodabic if we have very low pH or bicarb. Uh, or essentially, we can use show solution. For the anemia, if the HP is below 9.5 gram per deciliter, uh, 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 we can use erythropoietin. All right, which is usually a dose given two to three times per week, but we have to, have to, have to, have to, have to repeat our iron stores beforehand. So, in general, we aim for a transference as above 30 and a ferritin above 500, okay, before we supplement with EPO. Okay, then of course, your calcium phosphate balance, we need to keep the calcium normal and phosphate below 1.5 millimol per liter, uh, and the PTH within two to three times um, the upper limit of normal. Dietary for phosphate restriction, you can use a, a phosphate binder, which is what we call titrelac, which is actually calcium carbonate, 500 milligrams TDS. But remember, this must be taken with food, because if you take this in the interval where there's no food, then that's going to just simply go and cause um, uh, increased calcium phosphate product and cause calcification of our vessels, etc. Right? You can also supplement calcitriol which is vitamin D, all right? And some people actually may need a parathyroidectomy because of uh, transformation of secondary into tertiary hyperparathyroidism, which is obviously a problem. And many of these patients, of course, will progress through to needing renal replacement in the way of dialysis, either peritoneal or, or, or hemodialysis, and of course, kidney transplant as well for those who are candidates. All right, this was a mouthful, but guys, there you have issues in chronic kidney disease, Vanau meds. God bless you.